I mean, it feels really quick. It's it hilarious. Feels fast. Let's hit nine grand on the tag here. Let's see. You know, if I can take it to nine. Let's see. Welcome to the episode of Jay Lowe's Garage. To the car we're featuring today, well, you try and figure out what it is. Because you don't see them here in the United States, but you start seeing more and more of them now that we can import them because they're 25 years old. We have that rule here in the United States. It comes from Japan. It's right-hand drive. You know, there's a whole uh, category of cars in Japan. Under, I think they call them K-cars. Not like what we have for K-cars, not those Chrysler things. These are cars 600 cc's or less. They're uh, obviously small. They're sort of commuter vehicles, city vehicles. This one here belongs to a young engineer named Ashley DeLuca, who imported it from Japan. Ashley, come on in. Good to see you. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for coming. Hi, thanks. Now, tell me, what kind of automotive engineer are you? Uh, mechanical engineer. Okay. So. And what kind of work do you do? Do you superchargers, turbochargers, stuff like that? Um, so when I bought this car, I was working as a turbocharger engineer, um, doing uh, project engineering, kind of design work, uh, testing for uh, turbochargers okay. um, in the U.S. and Japan. Okay. And you speak Japanese? <laughs> uh, not really. <laughs> Enough oh, okay. to get by. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. So. But you lived in Japan for, what, a year? A little over six months. Oh, okay. So. Okay. And what, did you just fall in love with these when you saw them on the street over there? <laughs> So a couple of years ago, I ended up getting an opportunity to uh, move to Japan for my uh, job. And basically, I went out there and I bought the car within, you know, a week of living out there. <laughs> so. Okay. Before we go any further, tell us exactly what it is. Is a Mazda Suzuki <laughs> deal? Is that what it is? What is it called? Yeah. So the car is an AutoZam AZ1. Um, AutoZam. AutoZam. So, AZ1. Correct. Okay. Okay. So AutoZam is a sub-brand of Mazda, kind of like... The relationship between Scion and Toyota, I guess. Okay. AutoZam was the small car, you know, dealer name for for Mazda, where they sold all their K cars and small displacement cars. And, and why were you so into Mazdas? Did you have Mazdas here? So yeah, I actually um, I have a Miata, and I used to have an RX-7, and um, I race, and you know, the Miata was kind of the first car. It's a, you know, good, good car to kind of get into racing. It's sure. inexpensive and. You know, it's I gotta ask you, why did you sell the RX-7? That's a great car. <laughs> I I bought that car from um, the original owner, and it had been sitting for five or six years, not driven at all. Oh. So if that was my only project car, it would have been a car I would have kept. But it was just so much maintenance, so much to get the car up to a good running standard. That right, I, right. Well, I love Mazda. I got an RX-8, and I got my Cosmo. Did you see my Cosmo over there? I did see your Cosmo. We put a, we put a 12A engine in that one. Oh, cool. So it's got, a, it's about 200 horse now. got a Weber carburetor on it. It's fabulous to drive. I just love them. Yep. Did you see many of those in Japan <laughs> when you were there? I did see a lot. Um, yep. I went to a Cosmo Sport Owners Club in uh, Hiroshima last year and um, and Fuji Speedway, and they we got to do a parade lap. I got to ride in. Oh, is that right? One of the Cosmo Sport, you know, uh, took it around the track with an owner and uh, took tons of pictures. You know, they're great cars and. There's a huge rotary backing, you know, in Japan. The right. people that have rotaries are huge enthusiasts. And that there. Fuji Speedway, I was fortunate enough. I got to drive the LFA. The <laughs> you know, I always thought they were okay. I drove one here once, and they couldn't get up to speed. But with that V10, that thing hits nine grand. Oh my God, it's the best sounding engine and just coming down the Fuji straightaway. It was just fantastic. <laughs> it was pretty exciting. Yeah, they had I mean, an exhibition for some yeah. of the older, um, you know, historic racing cars. So they had the 787B and all of that. You know, they had all those, you know, do sound tests and stuff down the front straight and everyone's filming it and stuff. So it's That's <laughs> great. Because there's only like a half a dozen Cosmos in the United States. So it, it might be more. How many did you see, like at the owner's club, how many show up? Is it like 100, 200? No, no, not that, not that amount. People had to drive all their cars there. People don't really tow them out to the, the events. So right. I think maybe around 15, 20 showed oh, up. Oh, that's pretty good. So it was a pretty good, pretty good turnout. Are most of them white with the check interior like mine? Yeah, so most of them were white. There was one maroon one, and then there was um, a couple like very light baby blue colored oh, Cosmo okay. Sports. So. Oh, cool. Well, let's get back to this. So <laughs> this is a Mazda Suzuki. Now, why didn't Mazda, Mazda build engines? Why didn't they just put their own engine in their car? 
uh, Suzuki had already been made, making this motor. The same motor for this car was used in the Suzuki Cappuccino as well as um, the Alta Works. Okay. And so I guess they just decided to do a collaboration between the two. They had been working on the concept for this for a few years before they actually ended up putting it into production. So I guess between them making the motor and Mazda wanting to make a weird quirky car, it kind of you know right. came to fruition. Three so. cylinder? Uh, three cylinder, yeah. Three cylinder, 600 cc. Yeah, 660. It's a little under 660 cc oh, okay. uh, turbocharged. And what are we looking at? Maybe 52 horsepower? 55? 64. Oh, 64. Well, that's <laughs> yes. pretty good. And what does it weigh? Uh, so it weighs a little over 1,500 pounds. I think it's 1,584 pounds it's is what they move along pretty good. Because yeah. it's like, like you smile, you say, you know, this quirky little car. But in Japan, it's not really seen that way. It's just seen as, it's not really a little. Do they yeah, see it as, it's, a, as a tiny car too? They as, as see, yeah, so they see it as a tiny car. Um, people don't really look at it the same way people look at it here, right. you know, uh, just because there are a lot of, you know, equivalently sized cars, but people are paying attention a lot more for small cars in Japan too when you're driving around. Right, so. right, yeah. I mean, it's great looking. It's, it's kind of cool looking. <laughs> did they ever make an open version, a roadster version? They did not. Um, so initially at the uh, Tokyo Motor Show, I believe, they ended up having three versions released when they kind of debuted the car. There was an ABC version. You know, there was different things about each of them. I think the A version had pop-up headlights. The B version was a little bit more sport oriented. And mm -hmm. then the C version looked like a, you know, like a prototype race car or something like that. And um, even though the C, the C version car got the most uh, you know, popular feedback. The uh, A version was what they ended up putting into production and they, they took out the pop-up headlights in it. It has kind of an <coughs> MR2 Fiat X19 look to it, <laughs> doesn't it? I mean, with these grills the back side here. Vents, the side vents, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it looks, it doesn't look like uh, a 25-year-old car. It doesn't. No, it looks contemporary, especially the front. And the tires are meaty looking <laughs> tires. They're pretty good sized tires for such a small engine. I thought it would have you know, like Prius small tires. I mean, these yeah. are 13 by five and a half, even yeah. though they're, they look big on this car, they're still well, really I, tiny. Well, I know the tire, but I mean, but, it, but it's a wide tire. Yeah, they yeah. are, they are. Yeah, yeah. And it looks fairly roomy uh, for, for, for the side. And these are like a gull wing door, aren't they? They are. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I think it's a neat looking car. Now, what would you pay for something like this? in Japan, in, like in American money when you bought it. How much, can I ask you how so, much it was? That? Yeah, so when I bought the car uh, two and a half years ago, I paid um, equivalent, it was $7,100. Well, it's not bad at all. So yeah, and then plus around $4,000 to import it. Yeah. So, and then maintenance, <laughs> you Because know. in Japan, they don't really like older cars on the road. I think, no. I mean, no. the older your car is, the more you pay. Like here, yeah. The older your car is, the less you pay. <laughs> they want old cars off the road, don't they? So yeah. they just want to get this stuff out of the country. Yeah, basically when you uh, register these cars, you end up having to pay a recycle fee when you purchase them. So, you know, in five years, that's like kind of a standard time that you own a car in Japan. When you're done, recycle it and it's wow. done. You know, off your hands, new car. <laughs> I know, it's funny because you'd think, I mean, it's in such beautiful shape that you think You'd be rewarded for taking care of it and not getting a new car. Yeah, but <laughs> not the case really. Yeah. Luckily for the smaller displacement cars, they're a little bit uh, less expensive to yeah. keep longer. But you know, for the white plate or like the higher displacement cars over 660 cc, that gets expensive. <laughs> and uh, automatic transmission? No, it's a manual, manual transmission. transmission. How many speeds? Five speed. Five speed transmission. Okay. And you mentioned before you said there was a governor. They put a governor on the engine, something? Yeah, so the car came with a speed governor on it, so you couldn't go over 130 kilometers per hour, which is a little over, I think it's like 84 miles an hour. Okay. And so that was like one of the first things to go <laughs> when I got the car. Well, what kind of speed can it get to? Can, it, can you hit 100 in one of these? Uh, you can. You can. Um, I think that that's about where the car, I mean, to be totally honest, I don't know how fast it goes because the speedometer only goes up to 140 kilometers per hour. Oh, okay. okay. So you're just kind of pegged over, you know. Well, use your cell phone, use your GPS on <laughs> yeah, your cell that's, phone. Yeah, that's you true. <laughs> okay, now tell me, now you have two gauges there. Are those aftermarket or are those factory? They're aftermarket, oh, so okay. there's a boost gauge and a temp gauge. Oh, okay, okay, and it's turbocharged, it right? It is. Okay. The turbo is like the size of my fist, it's super small. <laughs> yeah, well the engine's not much bigger too, and it's uh, obviously runs on premium fuel, right? It does. And yeah. how much does gas cost in Japan, I'm curious. Yeah, they sell it by liters there. So how, much, so. how, much, how much a liter? Uh, 
I can't remember at the time. Was it, I mean, did you find it way more expensive? No, than no, it? not at all. Um, really? This car only has a six gallon tank. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> when you go to fill it up, I never paid more than like $20 to fill, oh, fill the okay. car up. So. Okay. And what kind of mileage do you get? That's this gets the best mileage out of any car that I own right now. It gets um, somewhere around 40 MPG highway. Wow. Um, a little over 40. Very and good. And high 30s, you know, driving around town. Is it disc brakes all the way around? Drums in the back? What is it? Uh, yeah, I think it's disc, disc all around. Okay. So. It, well, it's a, it's a great looking, <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I, I think it's great. And from the back, the taillights actually make it look like a big car. I mean, <laughs> I mean it looks like a full size taillights in the back there. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I think they had to make them higher so people can actually, you know, yeah, see yeah. that you're driving the car around. Now in Japan, they don't have the, th the third brake light, do they? Or is um, it in there somewhere? Yeah, there is a third brake light. It kind of sits right up in oh, here. Oh, okay. So okay. The back has like a really bad tint on right, it. Right, right. <laughs> Would you get a lot of looks driving this around? Do people go, what? You must get stopped on every, besides being <laughs> an attractive person and you're driving an unusual <laughs> car. Uh, you, you, people must just bother you all day long with this thing. Um, it's one of two things, you know, I get a lot of people that are coming up and then they walk over and they're like, what the heck is this thing? I've never seen anything like it before. Or you get people that, you know, they know what it is and then they kind of geek out like, oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't know that anybody had any of these here. It's so great. Well, I know <laughs> I've seen the, uh, Nissan makes the Figaro. Is that the one I think of? Yeah. And then, then there's the Cappuccino. This seems like the sportiest. The other ones seem like little shopping cars or something. You know what I mean? I mean, it just seems like. Yeah, this seems like it could be kind of a sporty car. You can actually even race something like this, couldn't you? Yes, and I have. <laughs> okay. I have tracked the car before. The other two are pretty, um, you know, they're all kind of equivalent when they released um, the Honda Beat, the Suzuki Cappuccino, and the AZ1. Um, all came out at the same time. They were all direct competitors to each other. Yeah. So, um, But this one, you know, obviously this is the one that I fell in love with. It's, uh, in my opinion, it's been a great track car. Um, I took it out to some of the local tracks in Japan. Right. Um, I took it to Fuji, Sakuba, um, Sotogara, Forest Raceway, you know, all the little, they have a lot of little tracks in right, Japan right. and, you know, that's kind of where this car shines is, you know, the smaller, lower speed tracks. Um, I took this to Laguna Seca earlier this year and oh, yeah. uh, it was a blast to drive it, but you know, you're just pegged in fifth, like right. the whole, to the whole time you're driving it, so. And you have a full complement of you got air conditioning and you have electric windows. Or, oh, you got manual no, they're windows. Made manual windows. Okay, yeah. but it has air conditioning. It right? does have air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it doesn't look that. Cr are you cramped in there? Have you got plenty of room? I'm personally not cramped because yeah. I'm five foot four. Right. But <laughs> uh, most of my friends are taller than me, and right. uh, it's not necessarily the headroom that gets you; it's the leg room. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I think it's just fantastic. Can we open? Can we see the engine? Can we open that up? Uh, yeah, the the hood release is on the other side. Okay, right hand drive. <laughs> oh, I love the way it opens. <laughs> so. Oh, leave it up. I oh, love okay. it. It's kind of like. <laughs> we'll put the hood prop up. There you go. Oh, so the engine's uh, in front of the axle. That's good. So. You so it's, it's almost mid-engine, isn't it? It is. Uh, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive. So yeah. All the snap over steer. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really cool. So yeah, it's a three-cylinder, uh, fuel-injected, turbocharged. Uh, it makes about 63 foot-pounds of torque, uh, okay. 64 horsepower. And how many valves per cylinder, do you know? Um, I think it's got four valves, four valves per cylinder. Okay. So. Cool. There Performance. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's true, and it got this brace across here that the Fords used to call it the Monte Carlo bar when they had that on the Ford Falcons. That's what I always call it. Then people comment, they don't call it Monte Carlo bar anymore. You're old. Well, I am old. And that's what we called it back in the 60s. It's like your dad smiling over there. He remembers the Monte Carlo bar. That, that was the brace across it. That's what I always call it. Now, I imagine they're probably getting every ounce of power out of this motor. There's probably not much you can do to it, right? I mean, is, is you left it, have you left it stock? Have you modified anything? Um, so I've left everything pretty stock in the car, um, other than just general maintenance. Uh, there are options to upgrade it. A lot of people uh, that have these cars do end up doing like a turbo swap on it. Oh, bigger or, turbo? Yeah, bigger turbo. Um, you know, you can upgrade like the exhaust manifold, stuff like that. There's actually an access hatch um, inside the car that you can unbolt and then you can get to the back side of the motor. So it's a lot easier to do maintenance and you can get to the turbo and everything from, uh, from you know, the inside of the car. Which sure, is, sure. 
Have you had to do? Have you had any problems with it? I haven't had too much problem. Just uh, so sometimes with these cars, the uh, sender wires for the uh, starters kind of break down over time. Oh, okay. So um, I did end up having to create like a little relay to power the sender wire to make sure um, you know it starts every time. I did get stranded a couple times in Japan. Oh, okay. And but, how many miles on this one? Um, so it has about 120,000 kilometers on it right now. Oh, well, that's about 65,000 miles? Yeah, so a little over um, 65,000. Oh, okay, wow. I mean, it looks great. Yeah, yeah and, and this is considered old to them, too. You know, it's 65,000 miles, like, oh my gosh, this car's junk. <laughs> you know, just I know it's get funny. rid of it. You know, I've got a, a, a 68 Mercedes over there, 325,000 miles. It runs fine. Yeah. There's this myth that's left over from the, I think, 1950s and 60s when we didn't have modern oils and things where oh, 70,000 miles of cars were wiped out, it's no good. I mean, BMWs and Mercedes, they run hundreds and hundreds yeah. of thousands, especially <laughs> Japanese stuff. Yeah, they, their stuff lasts some of the longest and they want yeah. to get rid of it, you I know? I mean, so. I meet motorcycle guys with 150,000 <laughs> miles and stuff on their bikes and it's, it's pretty amazing. And I yeah. like the fact that the horsepower and the torque rating are just about the same. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And the side vents are actually, um, you know, they're actually used. They're so functional, the, huh? Yeah, yeah, the intercooler sits right behind the side vent and the intakes on, on the other side. So you and do actually get some airflow. And going what's an through. oil change in this? Two quarts? Three quarts? <laughs> yeah, it's it's really small. You only go through like one or two, one yeah. or two quarts. Yeah. And uh, it's really great. It's, it's so funny that these never caught on here. Well, I guess this doesn't have all the safety equipment and all that stuff, does it? No. Yeah, so that's the whole thing with the 25-year rule, right? So this would never, ever pass safety standards in the United States. Right. Um, there's really no impact zone on this car. If you get hit, you're kind of you're toast. <laughs> so you run up for about 11 or 12? Yeah, the, the price has gone up a lot since yeah. these have turned 25 years old. So yeah. the cars themselves are kind of selling in Japan for uh, 10 to 15,000 right now. Okay. So, but there must be a whole, uh, there must be some Japanese business guy just rounding these up and just selling them here in the States, I imagine. Yeah, there's a lot of import companies yeah, that have kind yeah. of popped up in the last couple of years. And cool. Well, I think making it's a business out of it. Fantastic. <laughs> Can we open the front? What do you have in the front? Uh, so the front, you would think it's storage. It's not. It's um, basically there's just a spare tire in there. Oh, That's okay. where the horn is and like the uh, master cylinder. Oh, so okay. we can take a look at it. The yeah, hood. Let's just... right here. Yeah, not a lot of trunk room <laughs> there. And yeah, was, basically what? all that they put in here was a spare tire and. Uh, I do have upgraded horns in here, okay. you know, so it's as just, people are going to run me over, they... Is this a spare <laughs> tire bag? Yeah, so basically what happened um, in Japan when they released this car, uh, af I think between when the car was approved and when the car was getting released, they realized having a spare tire directly in the front is not very safe, so um, they ended up releasing, a, you know, uh, an announcement that they would like you to take the tire out of the front and put it into the back in this bag. <laughs> oh, okay. And I like what it say. It says, exciting dual overhead cam turbo, midship dual overhead cam turbo, exciting micro coupe. Why is it in English if this is a jet? They it, love putting stuff in English. Oh, because it seems exotic. Adjectives, like, you know, yeah. Well, we do that here, like the Maserati quadruport. Everybody yeah. says it sounds, <laughs> all it means is four door. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it just exactly. means four door, but quadruport sounds so much exciting. <laughs> so I guess in Japan, and I like that they say it's exciting. See, if you didn't know the car is exciting, well, they tell <laughs> you, you have right You this bag here. to remind you. Yeah, they tell you, remind you. It's, it's an exciting car to drive. Very cool. Yeah, there is, boy, there's not much room in there at all, is there? So, I mean, you could take the spare tire out, I guess, and put half of a grocery bag in here. Right. <laughs> and, of course, the same brace you have in the rear you have here. Yep. Is that, is that it almost looks aftermarket. Is that, is that an aftermarket piece? So this particular one is aftermarket. Okay. Um, there was a Mazda Speed version of this car that they released uh, towards the end of the production for it. And they did have a Mazda Speed specific uh, front strut brace and one in the rear as well. So if you bought, let's say, the stripper version of this in Japan, it would not have this? Correct. Okay. I see. But yet it's drilled for it and it's, everything's there. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, very cool, very cool. So. I think we're about ready to take this thing for a ride. Can we do that? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> you think I'll fit in it? <laughs> uh, it's debatable. Everybody. It. Yeah. I'm up for it, cool.
Okay, let's see what the trick is here. Actually, it's pretty easy to get in with these gold wing doors. <laughs> it's like trying Actually, to... Actually, like it's like my gold wing. My old Mercedes that gets its foot in here. Oh, okay. Not bad. Do you fit? Yeah, I fit fine. <laughs> Start her up. goes the other way that no no straight back yeah first is all the way to the left yeah uh, okay that's the back end. there we go it goes good doesn't it yeah it's pretty quick it, it is feels pretty quick. quick it feels quick and that's i mean that's really the whole thing yeah this is one of those cars when you're driving it and you're like wow i'm going so fast and then you look yeah. at your tachometer and you're like oh i'm going maybe 40. right exactly <laughs> but it's really it, I think this is really cool. I would buy one of these. Yeah, they're seriously a, an absolute blast. I have enjoyed every minute of owning this yeah. car, driving it around. It's great doing, you know, any mountain driving, tight roads. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's fairly easy to work on. It's not all electronics. Yeah, there's really not that much, um, there's not much to it, to be totally honest, you know, everything's manual, uh, you know, all the stuff is fairly easy to get to, but I was thinking it was going to be really difficult to, to work on because the car is so small, but right. um, I, I haven't had any issues working on anything so far, especially with the access hatch for the engine that's behind the driver's seat. Right, right. Um, the seat comes out four bolts, you know, four teams just pull it out, it's super easy to get to the hatch. So, right, and then you can yeah. work on your motor in your car with the door closed. It's yeah, weird. yeah. No, it's fantastic. So, who would the market be for this car in Japan? Would it be like millennials, young men and women out of college, no family? Obviously, you can't carry more than one. You couldn't carry one person <laughs> and even a small child in this thing. Right? Yeah, um, you're you're allowed to have, you know, a grocery bag, maybe, right. okay. <laughs> if you're lucky. Um, I think they kind of made the car maybe for. Young, obviously the younger generation, but it's just right. supposed to be like a city car. So maybe right. like a weekend car or, you know, right. a car for, you know, someone that's like a working professional, young working professional. Yeah, yeah. You know, they really narrowed down their target demographics for this thing. Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, doesn't really appeal to the masses, I could, <laughs> I could imagine. And you can't really go on long trips because there's nowhere to put luggage. Right. So, well, it's like having a F40 Ferrari or something. You can't go anywhere in that either. So. Yeah. But the price point for this was also a lot more attainable than an F40 Ferrari. Exactly. <laughs> and I love the fact that it's only a six-gallon gas tank. Yep. That's hilarious. <laughs> the only bad thing is when you go to fill up gas in the United States here, the the shape of the you know the actual gas pump is a right. lot different than it is in Japan so you have to like stand there awkwardly and hold it because it oh, doesn't you yeah. can't just let it go right but then you only have to fill six gallons so that's yeah, not that's true. True. I mean it feels really quick it's and hilarious you know, yeah. and you get that instant torque feeling you know when you get on the gas from the turbo like it all kind of yeah. gets in all the Oh, it, it's certainly a lot of fun to drive. And your red line is 9,000. That's kind of Ferrari like. <laughs> 9,000 RPM. Yeah. That goes to 11. But, and you really feel when you have a lot of weight in the car, too, you know? Um, yeah, like me. <laughs> if you have two people in here versus one person, you do feel it, though, a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Know, more than you would in other cars. Um, I'm like a third the weight of the car. <laughs> Now, when you had this in Japan, did you park on the street? Did you have to buy a parking spot? How's that work? So, when I was living in Japan, I actually had two cars. I had a company car and I had this car. So, I ended up renting 
an extra parking space in my apartment oh, to okay. put this. And then when I ended up leaving, and um, I ended up storing it there for about a year. Um, there's actually a parking lot that a bunch of AZ owner, AZ1 owners um, all store their cars in because they don't have extra parking spaces at their apartments. So uh, there's about five, six AZ1s that all park their cars in this one lot. So uh, I joined in on that and gave one of the owners my key and said, start it up once a month. And, you know, he took it out and took all these pictures of it every time he took it out. So, and where does the name AZ, what does that mean? What does it signify? Any idea? I have no idea. They, it just sounds American? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's American letters, AZ. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, they ended up renaming a lot of the cars that yeah. So. It's funny because when I was a kid, Japanese cars in America had Japanese names. The Lilac, the Fair Lady. Yeah. You know, they had very flowery Japanese <laughs> garden kind of names, which didn't... And then a guy named Mr. K told them the Americans like Z, Z, X. <laughs> so now it sounds like they're going to American names, AZ1. I mean, yeah. that sounds like ZR1. You know, it yeah. sounds like very English style. So they actually, the AutoZam brand sold um, MX3 there as an EZ3. I don't know why they changed, why they changed all those, you yeah. know, nomenclature around here. <laughs> but they also ended up selling this under the Suzuki brand's name uh, for uh, a limited run of cars, like around, you know, four or five hundred cars. Uh, right. They called that the Suzuki Cara. And it's the exact same car as this, um, but it has like a different bumper on it. Right. No, I think it's a lot of fun. I love this stuff. <laughs> I tell, like I said, I got my 64 Honda 600, and that thing is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's overhead cam, roller bearing crank, uh, revs to 95 on open. If it said Porsche instead of Honda, it'd be a million dollar car. You yeah, know? totally. This car originally, like on the market new from dealership, was um, like around $12,500. Not bad at all. It's really inexpensive, you know, considering yeah. what you're getting for your money. Yeah, I mean, it's very sophisticated. It's not like it's some old push rod flathead engine. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the three cylinders, four valve cylinder, turbo, and it goes. Look at that. <laughs> it's got quick handling like a go kart, kind of, huh? I mean, it really does. It really <laughs> does. Let's hit nine grand on the tag here. Okay, take it to nine. Let's see. Wow. That goes great. Look at that. It's full. Yeah. <laughs> it really is a lot. It's a lot of fun to drive. I wonder if small electric versions of this have replaced the K cars, the 600 cc version. You know what I mean? I think. They're starting to come out with some stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and they're starting to, you know, kind of recreate some of like the older K cars. Like Honda came out with like the S660, you know, like a modern version, you know, that's like a 2014, 2015. Right, thing. right. But man, I feel like I've sat in one of those cars, it's really tiny. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, like it's more cramped, I feel like, than the interior of this car is. When this car was built, it was just a really great time that like, you know, they'd kind of just let the engineers go haywire, right? Like, right, just yeah. go for it. We just want you guys to make a cool car. Like, uh, I would have given anything to be on a project like this, you know, as an engineer. Yeah. This is like your dream, right? You're like given the freedom to do anything you want. Yeah, <laughs> make some weird funky gullwing door car. It's got turbochargers, yeah. like, just go for it. <laughs> Did anybody ever try to sneak bigger engines into one of these? Did you ever see that in Japan? <laughs> You know, everyone always jokes about Hayabusa swapping these, <laughs> but oh, um, Hayabusa swapping these. Oh, oh yeah. The you know, and putting like a liter motor in or something. Right. There's room for it, but, um, you know, and there are a few cars that run around in Japan that have over 200 horsepower in these. And me personally, I feel like this car would be really unmanageable if you put that much power into it because oh, it yeah. really wasn't meant to be going that fast. Right, right, yeah. It was. Uh, I mean, it's already a handful, and it's got 64 horsepower now, so it does get kind of unstable. Not completely unstable, but when you're at, like, high speeds on the freeway, the car just bounce, bounces around, you know? Well, that's really. probably why they have the governor on there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that too, probably. <laughs> you 
go to New York, even LA, you get tiny apartments and big money. How big was your place in Japan? I actually had a really uh, good sized apartment in Japan. Because, really? Because I lived in um, the countryside. So, oh, okay. Um, I lived in Hanjo, Saitama, which is like, uh, it's like really rural, I guess. Like, you know, when you tell people that over there, they're like, wow, it's. <laughs> In the middle of nowhere, why do you live there? <laughs> yeah. But that was where our plant was. It was in Kodama. So, right. um, apartments out there. Like, I had a two bedroom apartment, parking spot, two bedrooms. It had a, a small little living room and a kitchen, and, you know, a hallway with some, like, cabinets and stuff to put, you know, storage and bedding and stuff. Right. And um, I think it was, like, $400 a month or $450 really? a That's month. All? Yeah. No one wants to live in the countryside. Wow, I guess nobody wants to be in Tokyo. How far outside Tokyo were you? Um, about an hour, 40 minute drive. Oh, west, that's a long so, way, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but on the Shinkansen, it was only like 40 minutes, so yeah, you yeah. can get into Tokyo really quick. <laughs> so any of your Japanese car friends gonna come to America to visit you that haven't been here? Um, I've had a few friends come visit. Yeah, yeah. Um, most of my Japanese car friends come out for seven stock. Um, a huge group of Rotary people come out for Seven Stock. Okay, what is that? I don't know that one. Go ahead. Uh, oh, what? Seven Stock. Seven it's, Stock. Yeah, it's put on by Mazda. Right. Um, it's at uh, usually at Fontana at the California Speedway. Oh, okay. It's just a huge Rotary festival. Mazda comes out, brings a bunch of different cars. You know, I gotta go to that. I gotta bring my Cosmo there. Yeah, they would love it. Everybody would, you know, freak out. <laughs> But uh, they always have like a whole group of people uh, come out from Japan every year for that event. So it's really not much different than a Lamborghini Miura to drive. <laughs> I mean, size-wise, inside. <laughs> Actually, well, thanks for bringing this by. It's really exciting. I love that you're an engineer and you work in the car business and you race it and you use it and and it's great. I mean, this is real, not real expensive way to go racing. I mean, it's fantastic. It's a great, yeah. It's a great track car. Great, you know, fun car to put around town with. It's, yeah. I love it. Yeah, and, and nobody sees them. It's a real attention getter. I wouldn't mind finding one of these. So thanks a lot. Yeah, no worries. All right, cool, cool. See you guys next week.